So yeah, let us start. So hello everybody again, and good afternoon to all the panelists and all the exclusive members of the Architects Diary. So and thank you for gracing our uh, conclusive webinar of 2022. So I, uh, Kamalaja Tangoli, the editor of the Architects Diary, uh, welcome you all to the last edition of uh, TAD Dialogue Series 2022. So yeah, so first and foremost, I would like to introduce our uh, moderator for today's panel discussion, Neha Garg. So Neha is an interior designer and heads her own firm, Studio Jane. Established in 2011, this Mumbai-based award-winning design firm specializes in residential, commercial, and hospitality projects. Studio Jane has published some of their wonderful projects on the Architects Diary, and I hope you keep doing so. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Kamalja, for such a beautiful introduction. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Next, we have uh, Nita Kumar. Uh, she heads her own studio, uh, as uh, you all know, uh, in Harvard Design Studio. It's a Hyderabad based studio, and uh, her wonderful, wonderful Instagram profile, I think, speaks for itself. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Next, we have uh, Simran Boprai, uh, who leads Space 5 Architects. Uh, as a principal architect along with Har Karan and established in 2018 in Chandigarh. This award-winning architecture and interior studio uh, works internationally in residential, commercial and hospi uh, hospitality projects. So Simran has also been a part of, uh, you know, TAD's exclusive webinar, I think one of TAD's exclusive webinars previously. Yeah, yeah. and uh, as well as uh, in one of the Unfold Diaries series. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yes. So then uh, next we have the founder of RN Design, Rohit Gupta. So Rohit is an interior designer, founded uh, this Mumbai-based firm in 2017, along with Pooja Rathod, his partner. And RN Design has also been a part of the Architects Diary since earlier this year. And this interior design firm works pan-India and has published some of the wonderful projects on our platform. So yeah, again, I also wish that you keep doing so. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And next we have uh, architect Smith Bhagat and interior designer Rajbi Mehta, the couple of today's uh, <laughs> webinar. So uh, together they have founded Studio Designer in 2018. And this Mumbai-based design studio has also been a part of the Architects Diary since 2022 and have published two wonderful luxury projects on our uh, platform yet. So Studio Designer specializes in architecture and interior design projects. So all of you all panelists and the moderator of today's panel discussion, I welcome you all again. So let us start with a brief introduction of uh, today's topic of the discussion. So yeah, so I, they say, you know, luxury is a necessity uh, that begins when necessity ends. So quite a wonderful thought. So on this note, I'll just, um, I'll just briefly introduce the topic and then I can hand over the discussion to our moderator, Neha. So yeah, so the key to luxury is and always will be centered around an idea of exclusivity. The feeling of luxury is usually evoked through perceptions of quality, comfort, richness, lavishness, and elegance. Luxury has a different meaning today than it did to the previous generations. It is a very individualistic concept. For some, it may be deep rich colors, use of gold and crystal, plush furniture and thick carpets. As designers, our community holds the power to shape the way of how people perceive luxury interior design. Turning a client's basic requirements into awe-inspiring designs is no less than art itself. So it's pivotal to discuss this craftsmanship, uh, visualization, and thought process, practicality, and the efforts that are put into motion behind the curtains of these posh designs. So on this note, let us begin today's panel discussion. I hand over the discussion uh, to you, Neha. So, thank you, Kamalja. Hi, everyone, once again. Hi. So, it's such a pleasure, and I'm having an opportunity to address my esteemed panelists and, of course, my gorgeous audience here. Since everyone over here is some or the other way associated with design or the architecture industry, with our personal experience, we all are having our individual perceptions about luxury. But I'm quite sure, post this interesting discussion, our definition for luxury will be much widened and holistic. Well, I have some very interesting questions with me to discuss. 
with this is uh, surely going to be very insightful and fun-filled discussion. So let's start now. I'm excited. Uh, I'm already excited. <laughs> <laughs> so have I. Okay. So my first question is to all of you, all of our speakers. Uh, what makes a design a luxury design? Is it the quality of the material, the brand, the price tag, or any other factor or character? Starting with you, Simran, you have always been an icon of flamboyant designs. How would you want to convey your definition of luxury? See, for me, uh, yes, you said it right. I mean, in most of my posts, you have read this word flamboyant and of luxury. <laughs> so basically, if you talk about luxury, for me, it's in every detail. It's not just the brand. It's not just the quality of material. It's It starts right from the idea, the once we are designing anything, if you uh, have seen my page, I specialize largely in large scale villas. That's my forte. So in that, when I'm designing, I'm designing it from, from the beginning of that, I am very sure about the elements and the details and how I'm going to come out with that one uh, concept of luxury, you know, which, which has been seen in almost all my villas. So for me, it is in every detail. It's not just one thing, not just one brand. It is one whole concept. Yeah. True. Very true. Yes. Yeah. Very, very well. Yeah. So Rajvi, what do you think? Rajvi and Spit together. What do you think? What is your definition of luxury? So uh, luxury uh, cannot be defined. It's basically a, a sophisticated and simple, you know, something which is very comfortable to the client. And uh, there are some very common aspects that bring the luxury factor into the house so uh, i would say um, it's it's more about the innovation and the you know invention of the of the product that you're using uh, for I, I would just give give an example for example uh, you know thomas edison he invented the light bulb before that there were you know night lamps the fire lamps which were used so for a person a light bulb is luxury you know but basically it's something which is which is invention you know it's some, something which is not discovered something which is not copied from pinterest or instagram so for me, luxury purely means, uh, you know, your own characteristic, uh, you know, you can add a lot to luxury. Luxury can be like, you know, a four-wheeler car to going to like electric cars and even flying cars. So luxury is just that little zest that you add over a product, uh, which just makes it more, uh, you know, utility friendly and uh, it's more comfortable. So that's what, what luxury is for us. Okay. So Mutita, what do you say about this? Um, so my take is, I think whatever this question is about, you know, trying to define luxury, which is anyways not possible. It is all of it and also none of it, you know. So I think it is more to play with the layers when it comes to luxury. I think the whole game is to play with layers. So when you're playing with layers, it, it is like playing with fire, right? It is, it is something which is very difficult to do because it is the amalgamation of different materials and um, uh, uh, different uses. It, it is a lot. So, you know, I would say that it, it is a lot to do with experimenting with different layers and not just, um, uh, you know, um, uh, keeping it uh, monotone. It's a lot to do with color as well. You know, color brings in a lot of luxury, but again, playing with color is very tricky, very difficult. And, you know, I kind of specialize in playing with colors. I've burnt my fingers multiple times. <laughs> so, so I think it takes time to, you know, get there when you're playing with colors, yes. Okay, and uh, lastly, but yes, very importantly, Rohit, what do you say? What is luxury for you? So, so for me, uh, like luxury is what we can't define. Like, uh, it is actually uh, like I, I'm agree with uh, Simran. Uh, like luxury is in each and every detail. It is a kind of a right balance, right yes, balance between of form, course. proportion, yes. colors, textures, each and everything. So, like for me, luxury can be a different thing. For my client, luxury can be a different thing. So, mm -hmm. luxury is what it can it can't be easily defined. Because the client who is spending 5 lakh and the client who is spending a crore rupees. So client who is spending even 5 lakh rupees or luxury for him or her is in between that. We are spending that 5 lakh rupees. And whatever 
the client is spending one crore for their interiors for them the luxury is different thing so mm -hmm. luxury for each and every client for each and every person it can be defined it is totally different so yes. it is the right balance i would like to add something in this lot of so lot of times yes. like it takes hundred of uh, sketches lot of sleepless nights to uh, develop each and everything and that can be also a luxury thing <laughs> Yes, Matthew, want to say something? Yeah, so I would like to add something in this. Uh, as he rightly said, you know, there's a set budget from the client which comes, you know, from the, the client can like, you know, wants the house in five lakh or can go up to one crore or two crore, whatever. Uh, see, uh, as you as as the question defines, like it says that uh, you know what is luxury, whether it's related to the cost or the material. So I feel all of this is interdependent because uh, today, as you know, uh, like you get. tiles which look like marble you know but i would not define that as luxury i would i would rather say that i would still push my client for a marble because still you know the marble still holds that quality that coldness and you know the, the way it's been how, how you can carve it and how you can play with a marble you cannot play with a tile so luxury comes in a very diff, uh, they come in different levels basically that's how much can you afford how much luxury can you afford is what i would say you know would define luxury So there is no definition of luxury as such. It's just that how much you can afford it. Yeah. Oh, not right. from the client perspective. You know, from as a designer's perspective, how 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 would you define luxury? Is what I think is important, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, Kamala Ji, hi. Can we also participate in this, or shall like do we do the Q and A later? Yeah, yeah. We can like if uh, anyone has any uh, queries or questions. Uh, we can do that uh, after the entire panel discussion. After the entire panel, not right now, right? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, all right. We can have a proper webinar, like a proper oh. panel discussion, right now, and then. And if you um, want to add something to this, uh, I think that can be done post uh, the entire all right. discussion is done. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, we are we got to listen even later on. We'll come back to you. Definitely. Well, uh, okay. Coming back. So with this, I think I can conclude that. luxury is very very subjective and which cannot be defined in very particular words everybody has their own definitions as per their own experiences as per own their pockets and as per own their living standards right mm -hmm. so with this my second question goes to you specially neeta yeah. uh, you are a proud founder of your handcrafted furniture company and yes. you know you are curating designs from scratch to support our country It yes. goes with a hashtag of go local for local Indian. Yes, I read yes. that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the so question goes like this: When mm -hmm. we think of Indian culture, we instantly mm -hmm. think of vibrant colors, right? Vibrant designs, textures, and patterns. What mm -hmm. is the Indian interpretation of luxury, and how it is different than uh, what is being practiced internationally? Hmm. So. i doubt it if i can really distinguish uh, you know luxury something india wise and internationally i don't think that's uh, making any sense you know because um like like i earlier said i mean it it is luxury is a component of so many layers right and how you are playing with these layers it it is only boiling down to maybe the choice of materials that we are limited to in india if your question is uh, arriving at that so yes definitely i think internationally the choice of materials uh, that they are uh, playing with are very varied and also the um, um uh, you know uh, now in india i feel we are uh, really gone that way and so many people are doing such fabulous works i mean earlier they were like it the quality was questionable right earlier but now india i think is kind of ready i've been dealing with so many of um uh, uh, you know design small designers and you know having their own uh, small workshops dealing with metal works and various things right right from wallpaper to customized carpets to multiple things so now i think there is a lot of uh, uh, good uh, work that is happening in india so also you can see actually in the past i think 7 8 years you can actually see the luxury is actually coming up in india you know what i mean earlier no one used to talk about luxury a decade back i mean uh, i think this subject was 
not raised so often in uh, design field, right? Now, because so much is happening and uh, so many players are there in the market who are uh, looking to do uh, luxury interiors is um, uh, quite, I think, interesting, I feel. I believe with the, with the increasing uh, pockets of mm -hmm. Indian Indian population. Yes, so people definitely. have more affordability for the yes, luxury and plus yes. it is also giving birth to designers like yeah. us. He also can, uh, also people have started traveling a lot. I think in the past uh, you know decade or so, and they are seeing. See, I I can talk about people that have been interacting with people who I regularly meet. Right, so the travel is also added to their exposure a lot. And uh, the part that the entertaining in the society is also like increased a lot. The social entertaining is also increased compared to, I think, a decade back. So all of these components have also led to people uh, having or showcasing or a desire to uh, have a home, which is like, you know, talks about themselves. See, at any given point of time, I feel luxury is something that you're able to emote a certain emotion, which just says that this is me. I think for me, that is luxury. If I'm able to emote, if I'm having guests at my house and I'm able to emote that expression to my guests that this is me, everything which is in your house complements your personality. I think that is luxury for me. Agreed, agreed. So like yeah. when we see your collection of your furnitures mm -hmm. or your studio, so we right. see uh, most of the things are influenced by Indian style. Of Indian course, style. yes. They're not so just when... Indian style. So, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of... Uh, um, uh, you see a lot of Baroque in my uh, design, like a lot of my carvings are in a Baroque uh, style, a lot of influence from uh, the Greek uh, columns, if you see, all the columns that I use in my design, in my furniture, like something called as a Kila Charpai or Shahi Charpai. So I have this series called as Charpoi series, which is like, you know, a, a concept of like a day bed, which is like a, in a luxury style day bed, you know, which can go in, in anywhere in your house. It could be used in your living, in your fire, blah, blah. So I'm just diverting. So yeah, so basically, you know, a lot of components which are just not Indian, which are derived from... So you will see a lot of temple architectural motives in my furniture also. So it's a lot of mix. It is just not, um, uh, you know, uh, not just from our Indian culture. Okay. Yeah. So Simran, I mean, when we see your style of architecture, it has basically been influenced a lot by neoclassic era or yes. gothic or the roman style of designs yes. how will you counterfeit your inclination for foreign style vis-a-vis -vis litas or any any other designer who is more inclined for the ethnic or the indian styles see i very different she uh, is mo focusing more on the ethnic and indian style and even in the furniture because i personally love your collection and uh, oh. you know this is for me <laughs> Talk about furniture, particularly that in one house or any villa. Uh, I always tell my clients that we need to pick, like, you know, not from just one brand. We all need to curate that because it has to be like the collection that you have built over time. Your house is to reflect that journey, as she yes. said, that it should represent them. So, to do you. yes, correct. We select a lot of international brands. We also take a lot of antiques. We take Indian. So, you know, coming back to the question, it has to be a complete it has to show it has to show a reflection of different elements my style yes the style that i follow to old american style of houses that used to be there back there so my style is yes inspired a lot from those old american style but along with that i've given it a twist of classicism how i added that was by putting a lot of details that got inspired from gothic style of architecture you know and even some of the designs they are on very heavier lines and while some of them are slightly to minimal lines, depending upon the choice of the client so i developed my design as an inspiration from certain classical elements and in amalgamation with few elements inspired from old american houses so that's what you see in my villas even in furniture, as I said, you need to show your concept. So that can never be just one thing or one era. You need to be inspired and create your own concept, your own vision. You know, that's why the clients would come searching for you if I have got my own style. Yes, so that's, that's right. 
absolutely yes yeah, yeah. very, very hey, nice uh, just a small question how do i go back to showing my face like switch on like yeah. active so there is yeah, yeah yeah there's a button there's a, there's a video uh, uh, there's a recorder kind of a symbol you just have to click on yeah, yeah. and you just have to switch your camera uh you would have to flip your camera to ah camera. got it got it got it yes yeah. okay <laughs> i'm really sorry you surely going to get practiced about about zoom now zoom is luxury for you <laughs> <laughs> okay going back on the serious matter so yeah. smith rajvi and rohit what do you say about this do you have some inclination for foreign style of designing are you really inspired with that sophistication of you know neutral tones and the minimalism or do you think that indian indian designs are are uh, are to be taken forward with the with india is developing country or otherwise do you think that you are the one as a designer who is independent to create your own design style uh, so uh, luxury has been affected a lot by globalization you know uh, we are so westernized and you know we try to inculcate those ideas and we try to fit into our design that somewhere i feel the indigenous art and craft of india has has been lost uh i would not totally agree with neeta uh, like even 10 years back or even 20 years back uh, india mm-hmm. was very much it was rich in culture and it had you know these marble covers and there were beautiful woodworks that you know people were doing in nasik and in you know in delhi agra all of those areas Um, the thing is, we were not able to really inculcate those things, and we were so westernized that we try, mm. we were we were adopting those ideas. But mm. now, when you see uh, now that the globalization has really hit people, uh, even in Europe, people are actually coming down to India to purchase these artifacts. Like yeah. like even even when during our independence, the British has looted us for our artifacts because obviously for them that was luxury, that was something which is unique, uh, mm. which cannot be re- redone or cannot be remade or you know cannot be copied. so for me luxury is basically you know uh, the indigenous art and craft that's been rooted in our culture and mm-hmm. that's what i feel somewhere we need to reflect in our designs and i'm sure that will be you know now that now that when i see international platforms i see a lot of indian homes coming on it with you know having those nice wooden pillars carved and you know those marble carvings coming in so yes now it's now now people are recognizing this these thing these forms so that's what luxury is for me that's that's what defines luxury and also people in india uh, they are more concerned about the process rather than the product that's so true. you know they want the process they want to know how things are made they want to know the uh, history behind it and you know just yeah. not buy a random product from the market just that just looks good in the house they want to actually you know uh, study it in a way that it fits their personality yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. we have a very rich heritage right from that's indus valley civilization and then that's true. That's we are true. having so beautiful uh, you know architecture even in the past so people are actually getting getting very interested with that historic style of india and yeah, so okay. people they, they want to merge it with the with the modern contemporary style okay. with some some historic element within so that in fact get accentuated more yes rohit i think you wanted to say something yeah. i i was saying there is always a small touch of tradition like mm-hmm. when work for the indian indian homes so if we'll compare with the internationally there is always a small uh, small touch of tradition while uh, designing the indian houses and like you can say india is known for its working on the fabric things embroidery works block printing the carpet things so basically if you go uh, and look have a look on the internationally designed so if you more and more you will see the mini, uh, kind of a black and white homes so for them that is again a luxury thing right mm-hmm. internationally very, very... if internationally you are dividing like suppose it is dubai it is europe it is square so everybody has their own culture so everybody they put their own tradition so internationally means it is not just a single country so if you mm-hmm. have talking about the dubai so dubai has their own tradition they put this jalis color gold colors so for them they uh, take their this thing this gold things and everything for india if i'm designing a indian homes if i'm work say for indian homes white color every client considered as a <laughs> you need to highlight the color <laughs> yeah so if you see any of the designs on my page on my insta page there you want to find some some of the color of the punch like on in on like every single interiors right 
that so, that is good very, yeah very very interesting to hear these strong perspectives even when yeah. i'm working for the indian i work for the canada homes also so suppose if i'm working for a indian the first thing comes vastu yeah. <laughs> so, it is so that that's very important and actually there 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 so, science behind it for the science behind it why we have to design the house so we have to follow the vastu like we can't put the sofa this side we can't put the <laughs> Nice. So actually, this vastu is also kind of a comfort level in which we can define as luxury yeah. for those yeah. kind of clients. So okay. Rohit, from this, in fact, to you, my next question goes to you. We have I have noticed that you are a very versatile designer. Okay, you give a very non-biased justice to high as well as low budget projects. Okay, yeah. which which takes me to my next question to you. So these days, luxury is not limited to a financially upper class only, right? Yes. We want to ask you: Can luxury be low cost too? Can the royalty be experienced in lower cost as well? Yes, of course. Why not? So, uh, at the first question, I told you that if the interior is within five lakh, suppose if I'm using a laminate all over the houses, and if I'm using a veneer all over the houses, so there's already a cost difference, material difference. But a luxury can be given in the laminate finish also, and in the veneer finish also. If I'm using a If I'm not using the marble, if I'm spending ten lakh for the interior and I'm using a tile which looks like a marble, that can also give a feel of a luxury. So it never comes to the material things. It has to be always uh, given appearance to the house, whoever is going to live there. So a luxury can be done <clears throat> low budgeted also, higher budgeted also for the like for me, luxury can be anywhere. Well, even well, I, even if I'm buying a hundred rupees watch and if I'm buying an Apple watch. So luxury can be both. Yeah, it's still going to show the time, irrespective. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Nitin Rajvi, don't think so. That is what we are yeah. talking about, guys. No, but yeah. it comes. Yes, I I have a little luxury. Is, uh, luxury no, can't. Don't think luxury can be bought at low cost at all. Yeah, See, true. Still, a laminate will be a laminate. It will look like a laminate. How That's much true. ever laminate you put, whatever finish you put. Veneer has its own properties, and laminate has yeah. its own properties. The look that can be created with veneer cannot be created with laminate. A look that can be created with actually putting teak wood on a wall or on a ceiling cannot be uh, created with veneer. So it, I think, it has a cost implication. Right. Right. Yeah. No cost implication is right, but nowadays a lot of materials mm. are available. Like it can mm. give a look of veneer only. Like if I'm putting a laminate, that can give. A yeah, look Baba, of but but it's not the same. It's not the same. Look is different, and actual thing is different. You know, because I so, I've used I I know that you know it. You can't get the same finish. I have like, the stains yeah. that you can use on teak wood, the and yeah. what you can use on veneer. It's very different. Yeah, the finishes that you different. because see, ultimately it is a finish that is going to be uh uh that is going to be identified as luxury or not. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. so yeah. I think finishes play a very major role. Similar, you were saying something. So to bring both of them on the same page, I have just one word. Yeah. That or uh, you can also say that luxury is something. You know, when we are talking about cost, she's totally correct that it comes with cost. Yeah. But he, it comes correct. with price. See, quality so, comes with a price. Uh, let's just put it this way that luxury. Mm -hmm. Some if I've entered a place and immediately I say, "Wow, maybe that one word." If that mm -hmm. feeling you get that emotion, See, and if you're able to, if you're able to dazzle a client, right? Yeah. So yeah. End if, of the day, yeah. If, if your client is dazzled, then yeah, okay. you achieve the target. But it might not be called luxury. Yeah. So for me to put both of you on same page, I think that can be one emotion, maybe created on a lower cost or at a mm -hmm. higher cost, but. That Emotion you're able to put that in your client. I mean, I think you have done justice to luxury that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That, yes, luxury can be. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Something. I think I think you mentioned that luxury is whatever uh, a client feels is luxury. Yeah. So if a client feels luxury is in low cost uh, luxury, But, then it is luxury for them. In the end, we are working for the clients, right? Yeah. yeah. So I feel somewhere it's it's uh, uh it's appearance versus the functionality of it because as mm -hmm. as uh, you know uh, you said that the tile now now you get marble finished marble looking tiles as well yeah the appearance is the same but you know the feel of it you know the coldness mm -hmm. that you get in a marble is way better and, you know the way the workmanship can be done with it is way better mm -hmm. so yeah I mean it all depends on the client's budget in the end but uh, 
I would rather <laughs> say, I would say that luxury does come with a cost. I mean, you cannot really replicate yeah. something as is, no, and you yeah. have to pay a cost for something which you know, if you want want it to look beautiful or even functionality yeah. wise or utility wise, it, you have to pay the cost for. It. Yeah. Uh, so I I'm agreeing, Nita, and I'm agreeing everybody mm -hmm. that yes, luxury comes with a cost. But then, wherein I think what Rohit wanted to mention is like it is it is very subjective. Yeah. Yeah. Person A, okay, uh, maybe maybe just a bathtub, a simple bathtub can be a luxury. But person for person B, okay, the wow factor will be when they'll be having multifunction shower or they will have a jacuzzi with bubble bath or they, that is with the mood lighting around it. So everybody has their own definition of luxury. True. For for us. Probably that simple bathtub is a low cost thing. Okay, for for the next person that could be wow factor. So it is very very subjective. Nita, you are also right when you have been mentioning that it comes mm -hmm. with a cost. Definitely, it comes with a cost. Okay, yes. but that is what we are thinking from our perspective. What mm -hmm. Rohit has been mentioning, I believe, is from the widen perspective. Well, yeah. When yeah. the entire you know, and when you see the entire lot, when you are having very small pocket people also they are also want to have that luxurious feeling with them and they, we also have like very high-end people who wants to have really wow factor with them so everybody has their own definition of luxury it is our 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 duty as designer to give hmm. them the wow factor right Simran? Yeah. 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 Yes. yes basically okay. basically luxury is what like an upgradation to one's existing lifestyle yes yes so, it okay, is. very well. So, uh, Rajvi and Smith, I want to ask you this now. So, what is the long-term maintenance cost of luxury design? What is the average life of generally the material used in the luxurious designs? Do you have any experience with this? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as as you know, all materials have its different properties. When we take veneer or we take marble, those are natural materials. So they do require regular maintenance because obviously the marble would fade after say five, six years and start fading and you need to re-buff it and, you know, repolish it. Same way for veneers. Veneers may, you know, lose its chain after some years. You need to re rework on it. Whereas the synthetic materials are, I would say, the ones which are much cheaper in cost and you get it ready. Obviously, you don't need to do anything to them because they, they hold that shine and they hold the material property. But somewhere they still, they, they look cheap. They're not natural. Yeah, they're not natural. So... Uh, we are more of like natural people like we, we like you know the touch and feel of it we like like the quality of the material you know so uh, yes things do require maintenance I, I i there is no particular time to it it's it's all about uh, you it's know about how you maintain yeah it. how you maintain how it how well you maintain because say if you're making a house worth one crore but if you are not maintaining the material or maintaining the furniture then it's going to look very bad in a year so it's a my luxury. So when my my high end clients ask me about the maintenance, I say you are getting a white elephant. Don't ask for it. That's right. You That's have right. to have maintain it. That's correct. <laughs> I mean, we've we dealt with clients uh, uh, who do not. I mean, you know, they they really have a luxurious house, but they just don't maintain it. And in the end, you know, after like a year or so, the house is in a mess. You know, and then then they come yeah, with a right. complaint that why why is this material like this or why is this like that? I just tell them you just drop so much wine on the window, you drop so much wine on the floor, and it's just spoiled now. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the thing. Okay, so my next question is very much open to you all. Okay, are there any general standards for luxury design, or if yes, then who decides these standards? Who would want to take? We this? as the designers uh, decides yeah. the factors, right? Everybody wants to show their own design. So there's no kind of a standard uh, design thing. Everybody has their own uh, unique way to design the house. So a good designer always listen and understand the clients who wants to live there. Okay. Vanita, you were saying something? Um, I lost my chain of thought. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, Simran, Simran, Rajvi, do you want to add on something? Yeah, so at least so general. I yeah, mm -hmm. as, as uh, Rohan said that a good designer is someone who listens to client. I, I don't totally agree to that. <laughs> uh, I will I will somewhere not listen to my client and do what I feel. Uh, because, see, uh, they don't have that knowledge. We have studied so many years because, I mean, we, we are meant to do that job and we, are, we have to retaliate to certain decisions. You know, so we, we, have we, have we, have we have to guide them. In some aspects, we have to guide yeah, them. Yeah. We have to but, tell them the pros and cons of yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't blindly just listen to your client. If they think no, no, 
समटाइम्स क्लाइंट ऑलवेज कम लाइक नहीं ये आप ऐसे क्यों कर रहे हो यू यू हैव टू डू लाइक दिस सो दे आर लाइक इनटू लॉट ऑफ डिटेल तो दे विल ओनली दे विल नॉट टच कि नहीं ये ऐसे तो यू कैन डू आई आई टोटली अंडरस्टैंड देयर आर देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ पर्सन ट्रोलिंग आई मीन आई मीन इट्स लाइक यू हैव टू गिव थ्री स्ट्राइक्स टू देम वी हैव टू गिव थ्री ट्राइज टू देम आफ्टर द थर्ड ट्राई यू जस्ट गिव इट अप यू नो लाइक डू व्हाटएवर यू वांट टू डू समटाइम्स इफ यू टक टू योर रॉन्ग क्लाइंट देन यू हैड इट Yeah. <laughs> That's a worst thing, huh? Yeah. Children, <laughs> do you work with standards of luxury designs? I mean, you... under my, as I told you, I specialize in design. My story starts from the beginning, so I would not say the specific thing. It varies from client to client. It varies from project to project. It's on you as a designer. Your experience and knowledge is what comes in play when you're defining these elements. so for me i think there are no standard there are no fixed rules for that we are open uh, to accept new things also we need to incorporate that in our design and there is one signature style which i think architects develop over time which is uh, reflective of luxury in their own in one way or the other so yeah that's what i would say so since you work with lot of details do you think that details makes the standards no i would say they are just details are the only thing that define your will or they are the only that is just one part of it that is the beginning part of it to add to it there's like 10 to you know, there's so many more things to it it's just a part of it. okay so i think I mean, process like... makes a difference you know yeah yeah how important is the process to arriving at a design which is a detail the that cons- plays a, that plays a lot of uh, it is stand i feel there are standards for it at every level there are standards for it you know So I think there are yeah. few standards which are uh, which are common to all of us, but then yeah. definitely we add on our tarka on it. Yeah, our own way. <laughs> that's what you. Is that's what I'm telling. What your own thing is, what will give it a standard for you? It can be different for me. It can be different. So even when a client is coming to you, they all they do a lot of background research on our architect. They've seen our work on our websites, Instagram handles. So a lot of come to them. Just simply find our Instagram handle as a pin trust for us to see classical villas. It's like, you know, it's like you keep on hearing all these things, and you know that whatever you are doing, it's making an impact. So that right. is what is. So similar in your opinion, what details are significant and should be regarded as designing high and luxurious homes? Specific details. You talk about that. The- Not, not one detail. It's a process, as she said. So, right when I'm planning, to when I'm conceptualizing my facade, to when I'm doing the interiors, everything comes with its own little details. So we can't, uh, मतलब put it in one, you know, one uh, word or one factor or one detail. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Nita. Uh, since you also work in a lot of furnitures, and furnitures is something which needs a lot and lot of detailing. Right. Do you think that detailing is something which also defines the luxury? Uh, yes, of course it does. Yeah, it does. I mean, you know, it is um, something like at a very initial stage. I feel that even a very detailed drawing and making sure that your plan and elevation is like completely detailed. and so that you do not lose like even one uh, uh, you know area one lacuna in the drawing then it arrives to making sure that the design comes out right you know so that is uh, it is leading leading ultimately to your luxury product right right so i mean from every level i think it, there has to be a perfection in your drawing making sure that every detail is there in the drawing your plan your elevation your sections that all plays a role in design If there, is, if there is anything in in those things which are missing, and it will it will lead to uh, you know not uh, not ultimately leading to what you have visualized for it to be. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. also about how uh, hands on you are during the execution because yes, uh, yes. Right. Uh, as I've seen I've I've seen few designers who just give the drawings and they are done. Yeah. You know, I mean that's not the process. you know you have to be hands on you have to be on site you have to touch the materials you have to feel each and every bar that you are putting 
and yeah. that's that's you know you're, that that's basically an architect or interior design, designer's touch that you give give to that product. Also, so, you should be very willing yeah. to learn. You should be willing to learn new details on site also because sometimes yeah. what you have in mind, what you hear on site, like yeah, at site so it is like so a riot. Yeah. Ah, so you're always like <laughs> correcting on that's the site right. only. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's also about say if you're making a mistake you're learning from it so it's again yeah. a learning process it's not something that you know you don't know about it's just that you're experimenting yeah. with it and you're making a mistake and you're learning from it so right. you have to take it positively totally. yeah right right each detail each day each moment is like a learning and yeah, i think know, a as... certain a certain standard has to be maintained when you're also amalgamating the material that's right so that process is like so important that only I feel comes with experience. कि आपको कौन सा material किसके साथ जोड़ना है और कैसे जोड़ना है the joinery yeah. that is the standard that we are talking about. Right. You know, so right. these standards have to be followed if you're if you are wanting to achieve a design which is up to the standard of luxury. I feel. So we we all are actually echoing a lot with the great architect Charles Flame. He says that details are not details; they make the designs. Yeah. Okay. With yeah. this, I'm going now to my next question. See, we all know Nita and Simran. Um, mm-hmm. Amritsar, Hyderabad, or Chandigarh are the kind of privileged cities to work upon where scale of properties are huge. Okay. But in metro cities like mm-hmm. Mumbai, the spaces are very compact. I know. I know. The <laughs> designers like Raj P. Smith, Rohit, and including me, and including me, and I am proud to say that Mumbai makes us expert to turn around small spaces into big shapes. Yeah. Isn't so, it? So, yeah. That can be ask, very challenging, huh? That can be really challenging. I see. It, it's like in, you may think that it is a challenging, but we are day in and day out with these properties. It becomes equivalently good for us to work upon these. Okay, so yes. we are versatile to work on bigger properties or to smaller properties. Also, with this, now my next question goes to especially Rajvi and Rohit. So, what is what do you think? What is compact luxury as for you? And how is it evolving amid rise of population in metro cities like Mumbai? How can you manage the scale of furniture to maintain the luxury in such situation? So there are uh, many, many materials that we can use that uh, literally doubles up the space. So, um, for example, we've done like really small spaces, and with the help of the materials, we've been getting comments on our Instagram and on our YouTube saying that no, y'all are y'all are lying. This is not a seven fifty square feet house. This is much bigger. But no, that is not the case. It's the material. It's the scale and proportion of the furniture. The uh, you know, the look of it, the lighting, play a very really important role to create that uh, grand. Uh, The grandeur of this. So basically, we try to create an illusion. I would say the space is still the same, the size of the space is still the same. But see, the expertise come when you are able to create an illusion of a bigger space. You know, you play with mirrors, you play with certain colors. You know, as yeah. Nita rightly said, she has burned her fingers while playing with colors. <laughs> I mean, she would be knowing that how colors really impact the spatial oh, quality gee. of the space or how you know how yeah. how it brings the grandeur to the space. So yeah. that's where you know somewhere the expertise come in, where uh, you need to know the right kind of material and textures that you need to play in a small space. That's very important. Agree, agree. And yeah. I have seen you people you you experiment a lot with mirrors, tinted mirrors, and all, yeah. and which mm-hmm. which double which looks like it is making the it's doubling yeah. the space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so coming back to you, Nita, I'm yeah. very much big fan of your bespoke furniture. Okay, thank you. Your design. <laughs> <laughs> your design philosophy is majorly towards maximalism okay yes. you love you love experimenting totally, with multi totally. textures multi prints yeah. multi colors multi materials yeah. do you think is maximalism analog to luxury design or do you think that maximalism focuses only on being aesthetic ple- you know it's just on the aesthetic pleasure side or let me mm. put it this way that can functionality still be achieved even being a maximalist totally of course it can be achieved i think they are both independent of each other you know functionality has nothing to do with maximalism at all it is two different things see maximalism basically uh, you know uh, like i said in the beginning also in my conversation i was trying to explain design so maximum maximalism is achieved with lot of layering right so when you are playing with lot of layers you automatically are moving into it so both are completely independent of each other functionality is completely so you have set aside functionality and you know that's taken care of that's when your maximalism will start hmm. 
yeah okay, so, so sometimes so, so. you know functionality can also be a hindrance i feel to create uh, maximalism it could yes. be yeah. i think we all will agree to it sometimes these yes. there are <laughs> many hindrances to, co- yeah. to convert our own designs to it but yes definitely yeah. we have to work with our own requirements given to us and the limitations given to us yes so being said that you you say that yes maximalism is is no way it restricts our functionality maximalism mm. and functionality can work well together right yes totally okay. so now i'm coming to my very very favorite question <laughs> how should a designer find client willing to spend on interiors equivalent to the cost of their apartment i am sure each one of us is sitting here <coughs> wants to decipher this mystery isn't it similar and, why don't you the... take this question I didn't get the question. Sorry, what is it? I repeat oh. again. I repeat. Again. Hmm. How should a designer find a client willing to spend on interiors equivalent to the cost of their apartment? Equivalent. The okay. Similar. I I'll go to you rather. Your projects are ultra luxurious. You know, could be a better person than you to answer it. Why don't you enlighten all of us with your secret mantra? <laughs> <laughs> mantra to it but yes since uh, you know why i feel my forte uh, even when i started my career the first house that i made was my own father's villa which i designed so from that time initially the concept was not that of luxury but the scale was big it was like on a lot of one acre i got to play as i left my studies i got you know i got a huge lot of opportunity designing as well so from that day and even till today we are largely focusing on those large scale villas and focusing on the clients that have that kind of budget they are willing to spend and they are ready to adapt to the design language which i put mother what i what the concept that i have yes it definitely comes with a lot of cost but the clients that i have they are also ready for that you know they also want that concept that luxury that um that factor in their villa so i have never went on finding the clients i rather feel the find me it has been the other way so it has been an easy journey i would say till now and uh, yeah that's it to it so probably you are you are born with your silver spoon i, I would like to ask other designers what do they say on this yeah so i just lost the hello ha huh. and now we can hear you well yeah please uh, can i hear the question again so i was saying uh, you must be born with a you know silver spoon so you must be getting clients with who are spending equivalent to their property price and uh, i i would ask uh, rohit here i mean how yeah. do you think uh, what is a average proportion a client spends on a high end luxurious home in india or maybe per se you can say mumbai oh see, see uh, now- me even like when, when we were in the college we used to hear that sanjay puri this amir amida used to go to flat to flat and yeah. give their card and they get the clients through that so normally i have not never done that and uh, really instagram these socially things like insta is there twitter is there <laughs> lot of this facebook is there so i got lot of clients from there so personally i don't visit any of the clients i have never given a call to any of the clients who want to uh, hire r and design so basically i got a call either from mouth to mouth publicity or this instagram stories what i put what uh, post i put so they have a look and they put a message on the instagram and they send me the number i give a call to them and then we further discuss with them okay, what amount you want to spend what is your tentative budget for that and what kind of interiors you are looking for so basically they already know okay, what kind of design i am looking for as every everything is there on my page on my website so it basically works like that so so what do you think like what is the average proportion if the property price is let's say x okay let's say 100 rupees okay so how much generally the client wants to spend for their luxury on their property see normally if i'll tell you i got my first project i have to finish in 2.5 lakh and that was a salon in vasai we <laughs> never took that project again i got a see even we want to know ki ha mera i have to calculate my fees i have to give the salary to my uh, staff and if the project can be done while having a luxury or not luxury some of the client never wants the luxury things 
so they just want to finish the uh, side their interiors within their budget some of the clients come nahi hamara budget hi 20 lakh hai suppose so if 20 lakh and they are not looking for the luxury things we are ready to do the interiors for them even in the 20 lakh so if client is asking me ki no you have to use pu you have to use marble you have to use duco in my house you have to use veneer and i don't want to spend more than 20 lakh so in that case we never take that project only because we know ki we are they will be saving in our fees no there will be no salary for the staff it will be just the waste of the time so it Since all depends uh, satyakati rohit simran wanted to say something earlier yes simran Yes, yeah, so when you asked about the cost that, you know, what is generally the cost of the villas that the clients that reach out to us. So what I have seen is that clients have a budget of like, let's say, eight to 10,000 per square feet for that we are doing in the Punjab region, Chandigarh, you know, in the neighboring areas. So they have that kind of budget. Hmm. That eight to 10,000 per SFT they are willing to spend. Yeah, they are willing to wow. spend. That's wow, you're in like solid hands. We all should go to Chandigarh now. <laughs> yeah. That is what I was saying. She has, she is doing ultra luxurious projects. <laughs> so I was, in fact, in my mind that she, her clients would be spending somewhere beyond ten thousand per square feet. <laughs> <laughs> but it is basically the client start from two thousand rupees per square feet also. Like I have done an office recently in Andheri and which has been published and. For that, I've got an IJ uh, award also. And that office I finished only in 12 lakh rupees. So it oh, comes up yeah. per square feet. So again, it all depends on the costing, the materials what we are taking. Again, client wants to spend five is per square feet also, 2000 rupees per square feet also. So yeah. it all depends on whether we want to take that project or not. Yes. So Nisha, I want to ask you, you are you are there sitting at Delhi also and Hyderabad also. What do you think that per square feet costing goes for making a luxurious house there in general. See, I feel anywhere in between 5,000 to 6,000 per SFT is a very good rate to create a very nice look. Yeah, anything beyond that, I think is really, really good. Okay. <laughs> Five to 6,000, you can achieve a, a, a good uh, standard and uh, uh, you can play with a lot of different materials and, uh, uh, you know, you have, it, it's a good rate, I feel. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything beyond is really, really nice. Yeah. What do you say, Smith Rajvi? I mean, what kind of uh, per square feet rates you you encounter with, with your clients? So sometimes, you know, uh, clients come up with a very unrealistic budget. Mm. And even if they come with a budget, you know, uh, we give them a it budget. And... In that budget anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, they, they expect us to even add the white goods in it. You know, <laughs> So, I mean, see, yeah. honestly, white goods is your own personal choice. I mean, we cannot yeah. comment on that. So, you know, sometimes what happens is that that's where that tiff happens where, you know, we, we so we, as Rohan rightly said, sometimes you have to let go of project because mm -hmm. it's not going to fit into the budget. And see, just, just because I want a project doesn't mean I have to take it up because later on, it's like we are cheating the client or we are, you know, trying to, you know, re, uh, you know, tell them that the price is going to go up. You please give us a little more money and then only we'll be able to finish. So I feel it's better that you, you, you know, disregard that project in the beginning rather than just taking it up and then moving forward. In a general so, sense, in Mumbai, I feel about 6,000 to 7,000 rupees a square feet is what I, I would say is a fair yeah. budget for a luxurious, yeah, a budget. Uh, yeah, and as Neeta said, anything above that, I mean, mm -hmm. the sky is the limit. Good, in, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. And we and will be as, happy. As I said, luxury, luxury is something, yeah. yeah. Luxury is something which which cannot settle at a certain price. It can just go on and on and on. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can even you can even you install a golden WC in your washroom yeah. if you want. So, uh, agreed. Agreed very well. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. So with this, my next question is: Is there something called a timeless timeless luxury design, or should it be changed with the changing times? I didn't get your question. Can you repeat? I say again, is there something called a timeless luxury design or should it change with the changing times? Uh, I feel yes, there is. There are a few designs which are timeless. Uh, reason being, as I, as I uh, you know, said earlier, that uh, when you do designs which are much culturally rooted, you know, in, in, like, like as I said, you know, marble carvings and your wooden pillows which are carved, which are indigenous art and craft of your nation. I'm yeah. sure those designs are timeless because those things are going to remain with you forever. And you know, with as as you will have decades going, you know, people are still going to recognize those things. 
mm-hmm. as relics you know i would say relics are something which are there for so many years and your house will remain as a relic for another you know 100 years if if, it, if it's there so that's that's what timeless designs are you know that's that's my definition of timeless design friends come and go but you know yeah. it's a really nice uh, concept a really nice uh, thought process that you give to a house that will stay and and, and 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 more than that i feel the way it's been planned you know we we are just talking about elevations right now we are talking about the aesthetic appearance of the house which is luxurious i would say not just that but the way it's been planned you know indian houses had these concepts of courtyards and things like that they all had some scientific reason behind it you know the way it cools the house the way the ventilation happens so if those things are there which are rooted in in the house in plan form then they will remain forever they are going to be timeless forever so that's that's how i I'll, i'll conclude yeah very very well said in fact i would want to add my point over here so i would say that luxury can be broadly be categorized into two parts two 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 uh, kinds so a luxury which is derived from nature b luxury which is man made okay the category a luxury which is received from the lap of our mother nature like marble stones yeah. veneers timbers lush greenery natural light water bodies open spaces earthy and neutral tones or silk or cotton etc so these are all everything which is mother nature is giving to us so these are everlasting luxury and are timeless okay here sustainability and luxury goes hand in hand right on the other hand we see category b that is the t- things which have been invented by man like uh, uh, every now and then it it needs a constant upgradation this kind of luxury has a limited span of life and definitely this category needs to be changed with the changing times like change in the technology change in the synthetic materials right yeah very well yes yeah, yeah so it is yeah. like that so few few things are timeless and few things have to be upgraded that's to true the nature that's man and the natural yeah. yeah. given luxury right so neeta uh, i'm coming back to you here So mm-hmm. what is your signature style of design uh, do you repeat any signature element in your each of your design or do you improvise it and come up with something new with every new client and every new design hmm so it's mostly the design is always new with every new client because you know it is also um your own creativity right you do want to repeat what you have done to the last uh, uh, house So yes definitely I think it's different with every client I mean the signature remains the same because you know I like to play with colors I I like to play with certain elements which are like uh, so me that's the reason the client comes comes to me right so that remains the same my signature is pretty much I think there on every project but the design keeps changing yeah uh similarly what do you, what is your approach on this yeah even i feel that you know with every client with every brief you de- need to develop a new design but yes your main characteristic your style your signature is always reflected in your design no your matter design what. yes correct what years you have learned and that's what will reflect in your design yeah yeah agreed so okay i am coming to again my one of my favorite questions so this is about my favorite elements What is the role of artifacts, decor items, and accessories in luxury interior design? Mm. Uh, how do they enhance the interiors? Who would like to take this answer? So, art, uh, artifacts, or art artwork—it can either make a room or break the interiors. Like it can make <laughs> it and break the interiors. So, it plays really plays an important role for the interiors. Like if I'm making a house. <coughs> i crore and i'm not putting any furnitures like any like pillow or artifacts or plants so it is like it will look a kind of a, a it is a kind of an empty box so it really plays a vital role in this and art allows uh, people to express their personality also their belief and uh, even like the family members are fascinated by art some of the people like they want to expand their perception of reality and each of them could be creative and all so it really plays an important role yes you have something to say for this smith yeah so um, i would like to give a very i would like to um, narrate a very in- uh, interesting incident that happened with uh, us 
um, there was this one beautiful house that we designed and uh, one day we were just going for a photo shoot over there and uh, we went to the bedroom and we saw this yellow and red colored floral bed sheet, you know, and it just completely changed the look of the room. I mean, I was so taken aback, you know, uh, like we had given them a certain, you know, we'd, we'd given them certain color tones and certain fabrics to be put. So that's when I realized that how important these small details are, you know, as Simran rightly said that, you know, uh, details play a very important role and the entire process plays a very important role of how you're developing your design. So somewhere artifacts, you know, antique, these things, things are also play a lot of important role. You know, planters, green planters also completely change the you know look of the room. So yes. I see somewhere these small details are very important and they will really enhance or ornate your designs. You know, it's like when when there's a bride, you know, you want the bride to be ornated with jewelry. That's that's when she look beautiful. The same thing applies to your home. You know, when when you want your home to look beautiful, you have to apply these small artifacts or pieces which will enhance the look of the house so yeah that's my perception of you know how we can use artifacts so now since you shared your personal experience yeah. you were saying something oh no very wonderfully explained yes <laughs> very wonderfully explained so uh -huh. i was coming from his own sentences that he shared his personal experience yeah. over the artifacts and over over that small incident so here or from here, I want to understand your personal experiences. So what was that first luxury interior project and how, how you got motivated to take it and how was your experience to, for your first luxurious project? So I want to hear my, from each one of you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so our first project was a very small house, 860 <laughs> apartment. It was a two BHK apartment, and again, the brief that that had come along with it was that we had to make it very luxurious. We had to make it look very big. So that's when we started playing with some materials to try and you know you know ex just exaggerate or make the house look more grandier. Uh, we played with mirrors, we played with colors, and you know we kind of tried to achieve in a way that you know we we made open kitchen so that the living room kind of looks looks big. Uh, we made an open bedroom also. We made an open bedroom with with a roller partition. So we did we did a lot of experiments. Basically, see, I, I feel experimenting is very important when when it comes to you know developing your own style. You have to experiment with a lot of details. Uh, things you know there are there are people who just copy from from Pinterest or from Instagram and they put it in their in their design. But that's not how you grow. You know that that's not the process to grow. So I feel somewhere if you experiment over the time. And when, when I see today, when, where, where I stand and when I see my projects, I just see an, an entire process of how I have started and how I've developed my style over time. And yes, there are certain things that I will repeat in my designs, but definitely not like copy pasting it, like not copy pasting the design itself, but somewhere yes, few colors that are really, which, which I've really experimented with it. And I know that they will come out wonderful. I will use those colors or use those kind of styles and develop the design over the time. So yes, I mean, uh, from the beginning, it's a process when you reach the final stage and that's that's when you look back and you see all these things, you'll realize that it how... actually motivates yeah. us to do better. Luxury is basically evolution. That's that's how I'll term it. Very well, well said. So Simran, you did, for you, the first project, luxurious project was your father's own house. Yeah. What was your experience? We heard that the family are the toughest uh, clients. Huh? What was <laughs> your experience here? <laughs> Uh, trust me, it was very difficult to put everyone on one same page. Everyone came up with their <laughs> and my brother also being an architect and me also being an architect. So my father is also uh, into not he's not an architect, but he's yeah, so, you know, all of us have got a lot of knowledge, experience and everyone was coming up with their own concept. But there's one thing which is very similar amongst us. So uh, my dad particularly, he loves a lot of uh, gilded details, you know, a lot of brass, a lot of heavy chandeliers. Cones. So I was pretty, uh, you know, when we talk about luxury, I was quite sure that what exactly he wanted in the villa when in terms of luxury so i played with a lot of brass elements i customized got those chandeliers i got a lot of uh you know different uh, persian rugs you know for me when of layer as uh, as you were telling earlier when we talk about minimalism so that is something which my entire family kind of resonates with so mm -hmm. it was um it was difficult yet achievable for me in my okay yeah. So Nita, uh, here I want I was want to ask you. 
I I read somewhere that you I think you started in 2004 somewhere back then. Yes. And you yes. started with two of your artists. Mm. Then uh, when you got your first luxury project, okay, mm. what was your experience then? How was your excite excitement? How did you experimented with the things back then? It was quite interesting. It was like a four thousand SFT something, and I think I um, must have spent roughly around six thousand rupees per SFT then. Okay, yeah. back 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 those days. Yes, uh, I, the appreciation. I think it must have gone beyond twelve thousand per square No, no. <laughs> I started. I started doing interiors. Uh, last a decade, two thousand four. I started in habit, which was primarily furniture designing, and uh, doing mostly soft interiors and not full fledged interiors. You know, I started mm -hmm. taking up total turnkey projects only in the last decade. So it was a decade ago, maybe. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I think with this, uh, we are very much on the widening stage. Here yeah. at the end, I would want to ask each one of you. We can start with mm -hmm. Rohit Radha. Uh, Rohit, uh, why don't you share your tips and advice to the younger and upcoming design practices? You know, who wants to explore this woke side of interior design and to muse beyond the space management and start thinking in the terms of design per square luxury. So do you have any tips or advice for these younger designers to go for luxury uh, interior design? Basically, it will be not an advice because everybody <laughs> has things. So like explaining like forms, follow functions. This is the yes. word. So everybody follows that, but everybody comes with their own ideas. So if I'm telling, you know, you follow this, you follow that, nobody is going to listen to anyone because everybody has their own taste own styling of work so mm -hmm. yeah so for the youngers for the younger generation who is upcoming who is doing this thing so i just want to uh, tell one thing only ki just whatever you are doing whatever like even you are doing a 3d even you are doing a just a drawing or you yeah. want to do the execution part just focused on your work and nothing else true great very very well said uh <laughs> simran what do you say you you have any advice or tip for them yeah so i feel all the new age design firms that we see um, basically everyone will have their own journey their journey will be very different it will be very personal you know i am no i uh, there's no specific rule that i can tell them but uh, yes uh, diligence uh, and hard work are two factors which i have always followed from my childhood i would say till today i think these two things have always kept me and i feel that if they follow these two things no matter what their design style or language is no matter how time it will take for them to be successful but yes being in the right being enjoying that process uh, they will definitely be able to achieve something bigger than their imagination that's what i felt out of my journey i hope similar <laughs> yes neeta Yes, I think you know. Uh, I keep telling most of the time, you know, um, uh, my uh, design team that it is. I'm like a big time Hitler in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad. <laughs> so because I'm constantly, you know, uh, pushing them to attain perfection in drawings, which is the first step. I feel to uh, making sure that the design comes out right. i think the first folly is where when you are not paying attention to your drawing i think that that's the first folly that normally people do and you know that comes with a lot of experience also a lot of site visits making sure that you work on the site making sure that you a lot of things and also focus commitment dedication how much interest you have actually in the field also you know a lot of i, I think teenagers are uh, getting into the field not knowing what it actually uh, and compasses of you know they are thinking it is it is more of like something with they are not close to reality agree you know agree. they feel agree. that it can it can be just achieved whatever every designers are doing it can just happen like that it doesn't happen like that yeah. I, i think i think it's it's a lot to do with the gen generation also right i think this generation is not uh, i feel as uh, as someone who's been guiding them someone who's been you know um uh, uh you know asking them to focus blah blah 
it's a little difficult to get, I think, the right quality of uh, people who are actually having these qualities. Mm-hmm. It's okay. very difficult. Smith and Rajvi, what is your your take on that? I mean, do you have any experience, out of your experience, do you have any advice to be given to these so, um, young designers? Very personal experience of, of ourselves, I would like to advise the younger generation and take that leap of faith. You know, like, it's never too late to start your own practice. Like, obviously, be prepared, you know, have things in place, uh, just don't dive into it, but don't hold back to a time where, you know, you feel that it's too late now. Like, don't, don't settle in your comfort zone, just, just do it. Because that is what we did. We took that leap of faith, we believed in ourselves, we believed in our uh, capacities, and we took the leap of faith, and, you know, this is where we are right now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so very much, all of you. I think we can now take, uh, Kamalja, do you think that we can take questions from our audience also? Yeah, sure, we can. Yeah. So I think uh, Sakshi wanted to add something or wanted to ask something. Sakshi, could you please uh, switch on your camera? Yeah. Hi. hi, hi. Uh, Kamalja, actually, you, in fact, kind of uh, said what I was trying to say. Uh, so it was in the initial discussion when these guys were like, everyone was discussing about luxury. So that's what I wanted to like bring an example, like, you know, for a beggar, like uh, for a kid who has never had a burger, for him, having a burger also is like having a luxury, right? So when you said that, you know, luxury is upgrading from your current state is something that I think, uh, you know, in terms of material design process, whatever, obviously that is a part of, for us to see as a designer but for the end product i think it has to be an upgradation for the end user mm-hmm. and that's what i wanted to add which you already had mentioned so yeah right very, uh, very well said if you could just use yourself and your the name of with the name oh. of your woman yeah sorry Achha, yeah so yeah i, I am sakshi i'm from delhi um so i am running my own studio by the name of designers abroad and it's we are two year old a company and I also have my employee here. I <laughs> made her also. <laughs> That's Mohini. So yeah, yeah, it was it was lovely attending this uh, kind of uh, seminar. This is my first with architects uh, diary. So doing a great job. Thank you so much. Okay. Right so out of audience, do we have more questions? Okay, I think uh, everybody is too, too much bewildered with all listening, with all these listenings. <laughs> here, I would, here yeah. I would like to wind up now. So yeah. I think, uh, I believe luxury is cannot be defined. It is one's state of mind. It's a state of having comfort. It is state of having an upgradation. It is a state of feeling a bliss. And it is very specific from person to person, case to case and side to side. There is no pitch to all mantra of, of having a luxury. For some, luxury could be taking a hot bubble bath in, in jacuzzi in their state of art bathrooms, while other for others, luxury is having a very techy space with all possible automations and latest technology into it. Or for few, luxury is high ceilings, wide walls, huge areas. In fact, on the other side, for some, Luxury is all about having flooded natural light from all the angles of the space with the huge windows. And for few, the state of happiness and the satisfaction is achieved in the ultimate motive of saving Mother Earth, that is being sustainable. For them, that can be the luxury, okay? So luxury is very subjective. It has to be very customized from case to case, client to client and project to project. And we as learned professionals about the design subject, it is our prime responsibility to give a satisfactory, functional, value for money and luxurious solution to our client needs and requirements. I think we all can agree upon that, that it is our responsibility to give a luxurious design to our clients. So with this, Kamalja, I think uh, it is an amazing session with all our amazing speakers and audiences. You, okay. How do you want to take it up further? I can, I, I can uh, say for everyone. Uh, I can speak for everyone. Neha, you did an amazing job. Mm. Thank you. As a model. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, thanks, uh, so thanks a lot. Yeah. So, thank you to everyone. Yeah, so thank you all for being a part of uh, this discussion. And I hope you all are uh, associated with the Architects Tri even in the future. Yeah. And publishing sure. with us. <coughs> being a part of uh, our uh, wonderful events and thank you so much again
Thanks, Kamala Jan. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all a very like Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone. Bye bye bye. Thank you much. Bye bye.